sent him in. I asked her to say your prodigal son, Norman, but she wouldn't. What brings you to this part of town, Norman? Nothing. Why don't you ask me to sit down? Sit down. No, thanks. I don't think I will. Bring on the fattest calf and kill it. What? Give me a job. Now, just a minute. How about Chandler's job? He's going to need somebody. I'm afraid I don't. Well, then why'd you hire him if you don't need him? The situation's changed. Has it changed because I'm asking for it? That isn't what I meant. What do you mean, Dad? For once in your life, why don't you tell me what you mean? I don't have time for smart talk, Norman. Meekly he came begging forgiveness. Correction. Not begging forgiveness. Just begging. Would uh, sales interest you? My sales manager needs an assistant. Is that a white collar worker? Executive trainee. It's the best I can offer you. Well, then, uh, why not Chandler's job? It's all the same to you. It's not all the same to me. Now, look, you ask me for a job, and I'm offering you one. Dad, I need a job that'll give me overtime. Not one that'll get me into the country club, because I don't have time for that. And I don't have time to iron shirts. That's rather short-sighted. Tough. There's no future on the dock. Well, let's don't talk about the future, then. Has something happened? Yeah. Is it Rita? I'm broke. Well, if you need some money, I'd be happy to loan you some. Then do I get the job? An office job. A union job. Sorry. Where were you at 3 o'clock this morning? At 3? Well, I... Uh... Don't try and lie, Dad. I saw you. You saw what? I saw you at the courthouse. Let me rephrase that. I saw you at the cell window. Then you jumped in your trusty car, and off you went. Just before your little friend and buddy Chandler happened to get out, happened to conjure up a gun out of the air and escape. Some coincidence, huh? Are you trying to blackmail me? I wouldn't say that. Well, don't. It's ridiculous. Would you like me to tell the police? Of course not. I'm much too busy to spend a whole day at the police station clearing my name of false charges. And how about the job? Personnel, please. Why are you here? I was under the impression you wanted to talk to me. You know what I mean, Mrs. Van Leiden. Why did you come to Peyton Place, to this house? Are you serious? Deadly serious. 
I have a feeling you're anxious to answer that question yourself. Perhaps I can. This woman walked into a bear with me. This house. A young, beautiful, sophisticated woman who has just been recently widowed. But she hardly acts as though she were in mourning. She suffers the presence of the lesser members of the household and allows herself to accept a very expensive gift from an old man. Oh, excuse me, an old friend. Now, that doesn't leave much to the imagination, does it, Mrs. Van Leiden? That depends whose imagination it is. I think it's very obvious that this woman has an objective, an angle, something or someone she's after. I'm afraid I don't recognize your fictional character. I haven't seen the book, I haven't seen the film. I'm talking about you, Mrs. Van Leiden. You see, your visit is very provocative. After all, there's nothing in Peyton Place to interest a woman of your background. No theater, except a very run-of-the-mill movie house. No concerts, unless you happen to enjoy the American Legion Drum and Bugle Corps. No museums. The only thing of historical significance is this house. It does have an authentic New England relic. Something funny? You are, Mr. Cord. You and your mystery woman. You know, she sounds like something out of an old movie. An all singing, all dancing musical of the 1930s. Let me guess. Gold Diggers of 1936? I'd be delighted to discuss movies with you some other time. But right now, I think you're missing the point. Oh, hardly. The point is, Mr. Cord, that you're an insufferable bore. And your innuendos about the relationship between Mr. Peyton and me are inexcusable. Oh, I, I've met your type before, even in the big cities. Little teeny minds who thrive on spreading rumor. You see, my husband was a much older man. Two. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going on a sightseeing tour of your lovely city. Although you may be right about one thing, Peyton Place does seem a little culturally deprived. Or is that just you, Mr. Cord? Huh? Ah, ready, my dear? Yes, sir. Why don't you join us? Because I can't. Pity. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. The reason for his death might be just a little bit more complex than it seems from the surface. I'm a lawyer. I like facts. You're not accusing Adrian. It's about your house guest. Yes, well, what about her? She's poisoned. What sort of a diagnosis is that? Accurate. Deadly accurate. The old man must be losing his touch, sending a heavy-handed oaf like you to try to get information out of me. You don't even like him. You know, let me... Out. Out.